Live, live. Oh, we have been sitting with these lions all evening and they've just got up right now in the middle of the night here in the Maasai Mara of Kenya and you are watching the Angama Pride live in infrared as they head out hunting. My name is Jamie and this evening the Amazon camera. Let's see what these lionesses get up to. They've stopped dead in the middle of the road and the reason that they've done that as I look through my thermal imaging device is because there's a two hippopotamus, three hippopotamus actually and they're just checking to see whether or not those hippo are going to come out and chase them. Earlier on we saw them dash away from a hippopotamus that came charging out of the bushes next to them. They're not too worried about it but they do know that they want to stay away from something that size. Two lionesses, definitely not on their menu. I'm just going to double check because they're very interested in something over there. There are some white dots off to the right of me, just beyond the scope of the infrared light. It could be, there's a hippo up ahead of them, but the dots off to the right could be something zebra-sized. So now we sit and wait. And let's see how they plan this out. They're both very, very hungry. They need to feed. They've got the young cubs. They've just left them behind near their old den site. And you can see empty bellies, bones slightly protruding. These lionesses definitely need some food. Watch the way they do this. One scoping out ahead, the other waiting patiently. This is the amazing thing about hunting lions, that wordless communication. One's going ahead. Still watching. I don't know what it is they're hunting yet, but my guess is zebra. You can see she's slinking soundlessly around. The second lioness knows exactly what to do. She's got to wait here. Look at the way she's watching the lioness. Taking her cues from her. Spreading out. The one lioness is going to go and circle. We're going to stay with this lioness. She's right in the middle of the road. And I think what's going to happen is that that first female is going to chase those animals in this direction. She's going to make use of the teamwork that makes lion hunting so effective. What have you seen, girls? We're going to take our cues from the behavior of this lioness. Waiting patiently. Do one more check with the thermal imaging just to see where we're at. You can still see the mystery white dots that I think are zebra. Lioness glowing in front. And between them and potential prey, one hippopotamus. She's up. She's moving around the edge. Oh yes, limber up before the great chase. Make sure all those muscles are working after a couple of hours of solid sleep. There you go, empty bellied and hungry. We're going to stick with her. Her movements will dictate which way we go. She goes poised and waiting. 
listening so carefully for the sound of the other line is. This whole thing is planned out. They've done this so many times before. They know exactly how it works. And as soon as she goes, we'll be ready to as well. She's going to walk right past us. Not quite full stalk, but slinking along. Here she goes. Oh, Barbara, you wanted to know if lionesses communicate with each other so that they know where to go. Yes, they do, but obviously not through sound. But what they'll do is they will communicate through visual communication. Twitches in their ears, that's why they're highlighted by that black color. Twitches in their tail. And there's so many studies being done now into the visual communication that lionesses utilize when they're hunting, or lions in general will utilize when they're hunting. Right, we're going to have to shift slightly just to stick with her. Wait, hold on, let's just wait for one moment. I can see a reflection of an eye there in the infrared. What is that? That might actually be a second vehicle. That might be Steph in the right place at the right time. Steph is also out with us here. Here she is, waiting. I think we're actually in the perfect spot. When those animals do come, they're going to be chased in this direction. Now, oh, Sandy, you want to know which pride this is? Sandy, it is the Angama pride. Just the two females at the moment. There are four, but there's only two here right now. And working together as a team, and that answers Megan's question. Megan, a lioness could take down a hippopotamus, but only when you have several members working together and two lionesses, absolutely not. Okay, we're going to have to move. want to do is draw attention to the lioness. So I'm just going to stop here for one moment and just check where she is. She's actually moving quite rapidly away from us. There she goes. Straight towards Steph. And the other animals are still there. Whatever they are. Right, let me go catch up with her. The chase is going to come across in this direction, so we'll know as soon as it happens. I think what the lioness is aiming to do... Oh, goodness. I do know that there's a deep dip up ahead somewhere, so I have to be quite careful not to fall into it. <laughs> I think what the lionesses are aiming to do is chase the animals think zebra towards the drainage line that's just up ahead that's a deep ravine compensating for their lack of advantage of numbers because there's only the two of them Steph 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 to tell him to stop exactly where he is. Steph, if you copy, can you just dim your lights, please? Just stop where you are. Stand by there. Okay. Right, let's figure out where exactly this lioness has gone to. There's the 
from us. Can you see her anyway, Vim? I can't either. All right. That's fantastic news. We can't see her, but Steph can. Let's jump on the back of his vehicle. Right, so we've got this lioness that's crossed the drainage line now from Jamie's side of the drainage line to mine, and it's a very big one. We call them luggers here in East Africa in this uh, Mara Triangle. This lioness has come to a stop after running past us now. Ears pricked up. There she goes. Something's happening here. She's running now. That's quite common of a, of a lion that sets an ambush. Okay, we're going to have to start. She's going, she's going. Let me just know what's going on, Mr. Senzo. So Senzo's on camera with me, so what we're trying to do is just keep the lioness in view. I can see something running ahead. Where's that lioness gone? Swing around a little bit. So I'm going to head towards the prey because that's where the lion is going. Hopefully we'll be able to see her. These animals are incredibly quick through the grass. And of course, for us to be as quick... Okay, I've got some zebra that I can see in the front. Quite far ahead. Scan around, uh, Senzo, please, if you don't mind. Okay. Now I just need to do some zigzags over here to try and find out where this animal's gone. Lioness, like I said, are, are pretty much at the most unbelievable advantage out here with us because of the fact that they can see so much better than what we can in the dark. Hold on, that was a big rock. Okay, we're coming up to some thick grass now. Alrighty, let's hold on here. Okay, I'm just using my headlights to scan around a little bit here. Last time that we had, there I can hear zebra alarm calling. I've just switched off because I'm listening. Okay, we've got a kill, we've got a kill. Okay, we've got a zebra in the grass in front of me over here. I can hear its alarm calling. Okay, here we go, through the grass over here. I had to switch off my car to listen a little bit. It sounds like we've got a zebra that's been caught in front of us here by a lion. We just need to try and get there. Okay, it's gonna take a little bit. Oh, whoa, hold tight. Big bump over there. I'm now heading straight towards where I had the sound. Okay, we're gonna have to switch off and listen. I've got one zebra alarm calling in front of me here. Now, lion will very quickly go for the throat. What's that walking there? What is that, Tenza? All right, we've got some eye shine in our infrared in front of us. I'm just trying to see. It's obviously pitch black here where I am. I just got my headlights on. So I'm busy looking at my monitor to see what it is that Senzo can see here. All right, let's go forward. Have you still got that eye shine there? Check again. This is the direction that the zebra walked off in or running off in. Okay, I've got a lion in front of me. Let's just see what's going on. Doesn't look like they caught anything, although this was she must have been incredibly close to this to this uh, zebra.
Okay, here we've just got the tawny shoulders of a lion in front of us over there. I just want to get close to see what's going on. She's breathing incredibly hard. She's got a kill. She's got a kill. You can see that she's breathing incredibly hard. That must have been quite a big, a big run for her. They tire out quite quick because they're such big animals. I'm just going to let Jamie know that I found her. Uh, Jamie, Steph, I've got this lioness. Uh, she looks like she's killed something. The grass is a bit big here, but looks like she's got something. Uh, we're on the two track that I accessed this place with. Right, there we go. Yeah, she's definitely killed something. Yeah, I've got this lioness. She's killed something with me. Dragging it now, zebra. Copy, copy. Uh, Geraldine, can you give me some feedback, please? All right, Bree, you've just asked me if it's really dead, and that was quick. Bree, that is our quick lion hunts happen. We saw that lioness run off behind us, and uh, she literally must have run into those zebra. I can't see if it's a full-grown full zebra or not. You can look at this effort that she's taking to breathe just to catch her breath. She probably did about, from where Jamie is now to me, is a good 600 yards or so. She absolutely was probably at the very limit of what lions are capable of sprinting after zebra, but this grass is, in, is very thick. And I think that that played in her advantage. I mean, we could barely just see the tops of her shoulders. So she would have killed the zebra with a very, very hard bite to the back of the neck. Um, when I heard that noise that took me in this direction, it was because I was listening to that wheezing choke that zebras sometimes give when lions have uh, have grabbed them, here's the other lioness. Look at this, greeting each other. So they got separated in the hunt. Look at the one lion that's just come up there, licking, licking the carcass, licking fresh blood that would be leaking out of the nose or out of the throat and the puncture wounds. Now, Christine, you want to know if she's going to drag this by herself. Christine, I don't think they're going to drag this much further than what it is. She would have dragged the carcass away from the killing zone in this particular area because of the threat of the kill being stolen. Now, it's a very real thing for, for kills to be stolen. Look how alert this lioness is. I'll tell you why now. It's because the, that wheezing uh, noise that the zebra made that alerted me to it dying also would have alerted every other predator in audible range and that includes male lion and ahina these two lioness have got a fight on their hands if uh, they're going to keep this carcass i think if any hyena within this area heard them uh, heard them kill it and that also lets us know now exactly why they dragged it away they dragged it away from the scene of that noise so that anything zoning in on that noise... Ah, oh, there's three lioness here. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know there were three lioness. Ooh, they didn't like me laughing at them. So, three lioness now from the Angama Pride. Wow. Isn't it amazing how quick it happens? Going from lying down 20 minutes ago to a full-grown zebra carcass. Now, there's that lioness walking off. I wonder if she's not going to go and fetch her cubs. It's not uncommon for lions with a super abundance of food to, to actually make a kill, not gorge themselves immediately because they've actually got enough to eat, and then to go and fetch the cubs. And I've got no doubt that the, we're going to see the reunion of, uh, of 
mother and cubs in a bit. I am going to re reposition my car a bit just to give you some different view here. Excuse me. As you can see from the grass, look in front of us all over here. That is chest high grass. Very, very lucky that we ended up seeing these cats the way we did. And of course it's pitch black for us. I can't see anything. I'm having to look at my monitor here just to see where we are. Right. Uh, you're going to have to swing your camera sensor so that I can see where I'm going. Sensor, swing your camera please. I need to see where they are. Lions, yes. Oh. We have... There we go. Okay, we're just going to get you a little bit closer just because this grass is so tall. Let's see if I can show you. Okay, there we go. Whew. What an action-packed 10 or 20 minutes. I don't even know how much time has elapsed since I saw that lioness cross the drainage line in front of us. That is incredible. So now opening up the carcass, one lioness would be busy with the head and obviously it looks like the ear there, that would be where some blood has been leaking out and it, she, they, they really just have no preference. The other one would be going for the soft underbelly as you can see in there, trying to open that belly cavity as quickly as possible. And the reason for that is that the inside of the insides, these soft organs hold the most nutritional value. And two lioness or three, but lioness on their own in an area like this that has a super abundance of hyena, there's a very big chance that this kill gets stolen from them and so they want the most nutrition for the least amount of effort. So it's into the belly cavity, it is lapping up any fluids that leak out of the belly cavity, there's a lot of water inside a zebra's belly cavity. They will then immediately go for the soft organs, liver, heart, lungs, intest well not really intestines, liver, heart, lungs, um, and then they'll start eating the meat. Okay, we've got some other lions around us. I can't see anything. Here we go. The lion's coming. Wow. Laura, you just asked how long it'll take before they take this to the cubs. Laura, they'll probably bring the cubs here rather than take the kill to the cubs. The only reason we saw that lioness dragging the kill was to get it away from where they killed it. So that anything zoning in on the sound goes to an empty place. That noise that we just heard was another two lioness coming out of the darkness to come and feed. I must say it's quite disconcerting. It's pitch black here. There's no moon tonight. What you're looking at is with using infrared. And um, I'm actually having to look at a monitor. I cannot see my outstretched fingers. That is how dark it is. So if you're sitting where you are now and you stretch out your fingers, I cannot see the end of my fingers in the darkness. That is how black it is here. And these lions managed to hunt in this tall grass, a full grown zebra from the looks of things. And a single lioness brought it down with the rest of the pride, having heard that and now moving in to enjoy the feast. Right now with five lioness on this particular kill, you're looking at a formidable force, unless it's a big male lion or at least Oh, let me just think now. So it's three hyena per lion. We're looking at 15 to 20 hyena to chase these lioness off of a kill. So I think this kill's pretty safe. Safe to say, or suffice it to say, we've uh, they've managed to catch themselves some dinner. Okay, we've got some more lions coming behind us. I also can't see anything. I can just hear some lions coming. That's oh, hyena. We've got a hyena coming. Got a hyena around the car. I don't know how many we've got. I can just hear them. Listen to that noise. Ooh. So the hyena is coming, and we're going to get these lions growling. Hyena coming in. Hyena coming in. Look at that tail's upstretched. Go to the lions. Go out. Go out. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, we've got three hyena with some more coming. 
Oh, there we go, there we go. That lion is chasing the hyena. Yes, they're wanting to protect their kill. It's a hot, it's a hard one kill. This. They're not just going to give it up that easily. But this hyena. What they're going to do is try and mob these lions off of this kill. Lions obviously trying to bolt down as much food as they can before it potentially gets stolen from them. They're going to mock charge. These are hyena. Stay wide. The reason why I'm asking Senza to stay wide is that action happens pretty quick over here with these lions going to rush in and rush out towards these hyena. Look at that lioness zoning in on that hyena in the distance. She's not giving any quarter to them at all. Now, I don't think that cubs would come into this. There's a very real danger that cubs would be killed by hyena, marauding hyena that are excited on the, on the, on the outskirts of, uh, of this particular feeding frenzy. I think it's much safer to say that these lionesses would choose to eat, protect the kill, bolt down as much meat as they can, and then use that energy to produce milk rather than risk bringing the cubs into this very high energy zone. Now once again, I'm going to just tell you that although you can see this in beautiful definition, I am having to look at it on a monitor, I can see nothing. The lions are three feet away from me at the moment on my left hand side and I cannot see a thing. I cannot even see my outstretched fingers as I said. Truly amazing, to be honest with you. Look at that, just forcing food down their throats. Maritza, you've asked me to judge how many hyenas it was because it sounded like there were so many. To be honest with you, I don't actually know. I, I, it, it was so dark. I, I, I saw at least three hyena. There could have been a fourth one. But obviously not in enough force yet to chase off, from the looks of things, four or five adult lions. In my experience in the bush, which is now running into almost 20 years, it takes about three, three hyena to chase off a a one single lioness and five or more to chase off. Yeah, some more hyena come here. Oh no, that's a moth. <laughs> Sorry. Moths were shining up in the in the infrared as much as what uh, hyena's eyes did. Now uh, we've got some hyena massing behind us again, starting to whooping call. The typical hyena call that they do is 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 a is a muster, They're calling in other hyena. So we've got four lioness. I would judge that at least 12 to 15 hyena would be needed to chase them off. Here they come, here they come. I can see some more hyena coming in from the left hand side of your screen. We can expect these hyena to sort of excite one another up to a point where they would be brave enough to tackle these lions. The lions at the moment not feeling threatened at all. They're, they're choosing food over fighting. And the zebra is being inhaled is a word I like to use to describe how these lions are feeding. This is amazing. We're just surrounded by hyena. I've got hyena on the left hand side of the car. I'm very, very glad that I'm in the safety of a of a car. There's lots of hyena there in the distance. Look at that. There's three hyenas. There's more coming in the background. Another three. I think these lioness have got a fight in their hands. So the Mora Triangle is well known for large clans of hyena. And hyena have co-evolved with lion. In actual fact, the first time hyena came onto the, the, the fossil record is about 10 million years ago. And it suggests that hyena used to scavenge off of saber-toothed lions, saber-toothed cats, who were incapable with their long canines of chewing through hair and chewing bones and uh, hyenas have developed this remarkable characteristic of scavenging but over the years over the millennia hyenas have realized that they don't actually have to just wait for leftovers they can take what they want in enough numbers 
Okay, the hyena have calmed down again. They haven't uh, they have stopped whooping. Kristen, you've asked a very good question. Would the hyenas carry on grouping and mustering and, and harassing these lion uh, until they get a morsel? Or at some point will they call it a night and go after easier prey? Um, Kristen, that's quite difficult to judge, to be quite honest with you. I mean, rationale would dictate that, uh, that the hyenas would try and call in as much help as they could, chase the lions off and grab what is left, but these lionesses are capable of bolting food down at an incredible rate. Already, the majority of this zebra carcass, all the nutritious portions at least anyway, have been wolfed down. And with 15 hyena needed to chase these lionesses off, it might just be easier if I were a hyena to go and look for something else to eat tonight. Nevertheless, and that said, there is easy pickings here if all you do is you harass some lioness away from a zebra. So I think what we, we're going to be seeing is this massing surge in, try and intimidate the lions and then run off again. Or they may just decide to head off in a different direction. I've seen both happen across the years. So very difficult to judge actually at this point what's going on. You can hear these hyenas starting to whoop again. There you can see on the left hand side of your screen dots of light. That is the outskirts of where these hyena are comfortable at the moment. Brenda, you've asked the inevitable question. Will the male lions come in soon and chase the hyena off. Brenda, if there was a male lion in this area and he heard that zebra die, he definitely would make his way here. Free food for a lion is something they wouldn't pass up. That said, they will try and uh, he will try and chase off these hyena as well. Male lion have this almost active hate for for hyena. And I think personally it's because they're under such a huge threat from hyena throughout their developing years, you know, from cubs, hyena terrify lion cubs, and then when he was a young male lion on his own or in a small coalition, hyena used to te or would terrorize lions as well off of kills quite often. And it sort of harbors in adult lions. Here we go, this one lion, she's definitely a lot more aggressive than what other lions. She goes and chases that hyena. Christine, the rest of the, the, the hyenas are absolutely calling the rest of their pack. I'm going to change the car around a little bit just so that we can get a view of these uh, these lions, uh, these hyenas as well. So I'm just going to turn the car a bit. You can see there that me starting the car had no noticeable effect on the lion's behavior whatsoever. And that's exactly how we want to keep it. So all I'm going to do is change our position a little bit so that we can see these uh, hyena as well. There's a big deep drainage line off on our side. And what I want to do is just get us into a slightly different angle so that we can see where these hyena are coming from. Right, now I want to remind you again that it is pitch black, I can see nothing. So I'm just quickly going to switch on my headlights. I just want to get a different angle on this vehicle. Can you find those lines for me again, please? Okay, I got them. So, I'm just getting us into a little bit of a different position here so that we can see we have a 
Nice view of the lions and any ahina that seem to be massing off on our side. Janine, you made an interesting observation. You're saying that it's quite amazing that the lions are cooperatively eating rather than fighting as one another. <clears throat> Janine, you're 100% right there. And the reason for that is that in this particular instance, they're prioritizing food over f squabbling with each other. They need to each grab a portion of this carcass. There, look, you can see that that lioness is busy feeding on the intestines, which is usually left for last. And that is testimony to what's happening right here, Janine, is that they are prioritizing nutrition over fighting amongst one another and obviously fighting the hyena. And the reason for that is that this pride has a lot of cubs at the moment. These mothers are needing to produce milk. Milk is an incredibly expensive thing to produce from a metabolic point of view. And these moms would instinctively know. We've got some more lions. That was an interesting sound. So off in this direction here, I've just heard lion and ahina have a bit of a fight with one another, or it was two ahinas having a fight with one another. It's so difficult to judge sounds out here. Just to reiterate again, if you stick out your hand and you wiggle your fingers, you can see it. I cannot. That's how dark it is right now. No moon. That's amazing. These lion now having bolted almost a quarter of their body weight. They would be getting full now. So that where you're looking there now, that's where we're hearing. There we go. Off to the right center. Right. Right. Inside there behind that tree. Up a little bit. There we go. You can see the eye shine. That's just at the very limit of our of our um, in, uh, infrared. Something is coming through the trees there. I think it's Ahina. That's where the noise is coming from, and I can see at least three or four pairs of eyes over there. That is probably about 150 yards away. I find that unbelievable, where at the point of my fingers, I can't see them, it's so dark, yet 150, 200 yards away, we can show you movement in the grass on a pitch black night. Truly wonderful where we're coming in this day and age, isn't it? Right, there you've got these lioness again on their kills, on the kill. Whew, just to recap exactly what happened, Jamie was with some lions, we actually sharing looking after these lions for the night we wanted to see what they got up to they've been sleeping for the whole evening and all of a sudden they got up and they i've got sound again on my right hand side something's coming through the grass here on my right i'll catch you up now it's just i got all this noise in the grass off to my right something's inside this bush here no, my imagination. Oh, it's a lion right in front of the car. Wow. <laughs> Look at that, you can almost touch it, hey. <laughs> that is insane. Okay, that lioness now has eaten enough. I think she's going to go and get her cubs. Wow catch my breath actually so this lioness ran up this drainage line crossed over from Jamie's side to my side crossed behind the car and ran off and as we turned around in the distance we saw some running shapes I thought they were zebra we switched off the car heard a zebra give a tiny wheeze which I'd heard before luckily and knew exactly what it was we sent it in or homed in on the noise and in a split second caught the shoulder blades just those shoulder blades of a lioness in the grass next to us we were three or four yards away from her she was virtually invisible and we stopped and this scene unfolded from there lioness had on her own killed a zebra and her sisters and pride mates 
then came to join her out of the darkness. In the interim, we've been joined by a couple of ahina, I don't know, probably about six or seven. Talana, you've asked a question I've been asking myself for years. Is what we're seeing in infrared similar to what the lions are seeing at the moment? Talana, I, you know what, actually, yes. I, I don't think it's the same. I don't think we can conceive what lions can and can't see, what they can and can't hear what they can and can't smell, and in particular, what all of that combined uh, means in a lion's mind in the dark. I, I, I don't think that we can, can imagine what it would be like to have senses uh, at the level that they have. But I would imagine that if we had to break it down into its individual parts, that, that that yes, to a degree, I think that what we can see tonight with the infrared is what lions can see. Perhaps not with the same sharpness, maybe. Uh, but they tend to be fantastic navigators. I mean, this lion is homed in on a running zebra without falling into a hole, tripping over a stump. Something that even with bright lights on the car, I cannot do. So Tulana, yeah, I would agree. I would say yes. This is what they see. I think the hyena have moved off. I don't hear them anymore. I do hear a hyena calling off to my south, but far away in that direction that you're looking now. That is south. Listen to the growling. Now the squabbling starts. So as the carcass starts to to uh, to get smaller and smaller, that usual lion scrappiness around. Look at the mother there on her belly. She's lactating, so she's one of the lionesses lactating. That is not food heavy. That's milk heavy. I'm glad that she's actually getting a lot of food. You go, girl. She needs to eat. As I said, milk production is very expensive from a metabolic point of view. Lions have got very high metabolisms. A lion would literally look uh, after two weeks of no food like we would look after one month of no food. So we've all seen uh, pictures of, of people that have, haven't had a lot of food. Lions go down to that same gaunt skeletal look and it happens very quickly. Two weeks, three weeks. So I'm very glad that uh, this lioness is eating. All right, I do have it on good authority that Jamie on the other side of the drainage line is uh, is with the lioness, uh, or with the cubs actually, and hopefully that lioness that left us in a little bit pops up with Jamie. And uh, so why don't you go and have a look at what she's got to show you. That is definitely what I'm waiting for. And how perfectly did that work out? Myself on one side of the drainage line and Steph on the other. I wouldn't have been able to keep up with those lionesses, so it just all played out perfectly. And hopefully the, for the cubs, it will play out perfectly soon. All, all of them have been listening intently to the sounds of their mothers fighting off the hyenas, securing them dinner, making sure that it's safe. Now they've got to wait to be collected and taken across to dinner. And you can see that they're hungry. They're so excited to go and join the lionesses. But now they've been waiting for probably about 10 or so minutes. Oh, oh, listen, I can hear a lion roaring. That's a male. Most likely in this area, that's dad, or one potential dad at least. So an exciting evening for these cubs, there's seven of them all together, I can only see the four of them now, cuddled together in a puddle of fur, waiting waiting and watching. I keep checking every now and again to see if the mother is on her way to come and fetch them. 
But it's amazing how instinct works because although the cubs know exactly where their mothers have the kill, they haven't got up and gone in that direction because that would immediately, immediately draw the attention of the surrounding hyenas. They've been chased off the kill, but they wouldn't hesitate to kill a cub. Uh, Rebecca, you want to know how long the cubs nurse for, how long they fed milk for. Up until around about six months, they, they actually start eating meat at around about six weeks old, six weeks to two months. But they'll be properly fully weaned at around about six months. Sometimes you get lion cubs that feed for longer or suckle for longer. And the reason that they do that is because mothers of younger cubs will obviously still be lactating. And the older cubs, because lions allo suckle, the older cubs get an opportunity to be fed for a little bit longer as well. So they kind of get lucky in that regard. Well, since there's no sign of the lioness and our cubs are all cuddled together for now, why don't you head back across to Steph? Because it seems as though the scavengers are out in full force tonight. Quite nice being able to jump between Jamie and I, telling different parts of the same story, although we are miles apart. Well, not miles, but I cannot even see or hear Jamie. That that you're looking at there is another frequent visitor to Lion Kills. That's a jackal, very similar to a fox or a coyote. That in this area is one of the smallest of the scavengers, although with a pretty omnivorous diet. They will eat almost anything, including fruits and veggies and roots, insects, fish, birds, dead meat. That is the black-backed jackal. And you can see how far it is there. We just caught that eye shine in the distance there. Now, interestingly, when you were with uh, Jamie, the um, there were some male lion calling not too far away from here on the other side of the Mara River off to our eastern side about two miles away two or three miles away and then another lion was roaring in answer to those male lions and the lionesses perked up their head I'll tell you a story about that now or what I think about it at least anyway that jackal is keeping to the outskirts of this kill heard the commotion wanted to come in and see if he could uh, pick up any scraps it's obviously much more efficient from an energy point of view to uh, to just hang around a little bit and lick up the bone and blood and leftover tissue that lions leave around in their messy feeding and in so doing picking up an easy meal without too much effort now interestingly uh, back, and back to the story of the lions roaring when uh, you were with Jamie and the cubs Lioness are very, percept very perceptive to male lions roaring and some hyena calling again behind us but um, very perceptive to male lions roaring because they obviously need to make sure that the fathers of their cubs are the best and strongest males around the females are the custodians of the genetic wealth in a pride and they will not mate with with males that are weak or cannot hold the territory and what was interesting was they had very little reaction to the male lion that roared first and a big reaction to the answering roar and that tells me that potentially on the outskirts of the angama pride's territory we've got new male lions and that is very interesting for me Right, let's go and see what those cubs are doing and if mom has arrived. Mom has indeed arrived. Mom is here. Cubs are excited. But the four eager cubs are going to have to wait just that little bit longer because there's still more cubs on their way. And they haven't quite popped out just yet. So mom is still standing, waiting and calling. Of course, it's impossible for us to tell which set of cubs she is the mother to because there we go here comes another one here goes number five here comes number six here comes number seven there we go <laughs> happy and excited <laughs> oh goodness she's got her hands full or her paws full at least oh 
Yay! Thank you, thank you for getting us dinner. Okay, let's catch up with them. Again, we'll have to hand it over to Steph once we get to the drainage line. But we've got some time before we get there. There's still three tiny cubs. But they haven't been called. They haven't been brave enough to come out. It's the tiny newest members of the Angama Pride. And they've got to be slightly more... They've got to be slightly more alert and careful. And they tend to be more timid. And it'll take one of the lionesses actively going to go and fetch them rather than just calling before they'll come out. Oh, oh hold on. All going up to the tree. Uh, Brenda, you want to know how mom is going to keep all of these little cubs safe from the hyena? Well, it's something that she's well practiced at with the number of hyena out here. I agree, it will be a tough thing for her to do, but it's obviously something they have to do each and every single time they make a kill. She's like a harried school teacher. Let's catch up. She'll fight back, and I think if there was any sign of trouble, the rest of the lionesses would come dashing out to give her a hand. They obviously know exactly how to manage this and they know that there will be hyenas lurking around. That's where their sensitive sense of smell as well and hearing comes becomes very, very important. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, that's a lot of cubs to keep track of. And Carol, you want to know how old all of these cubs are? I would say all seven of them are roughly around the same age. And if I had to guess, I'd put them at around about four months old. Maybe just a little bit older than that. It's hard to get a perspective of scale in the dark. I would put them at around about, no, let's say five months. Let's say five months old. And again, the rate that lion cubs grow depends very much on the quantity of food that they receive. Now, these cubs have been born in the sort of the green season when the wildebeest aren't here. But that's going to change significantly. They're going to get more and more food once the migration arrives. And for the three little cubs, they've been born at the perfect time of year. Now, Michaela, you'd like to know how old until they can hunt for themselves. They've got a long way to go still. And even at a year old, they'll still be clumsy. They still need practice. And although they'll be participating often to the detriment of the hunt, it's only really when they're about two years old that they are actively contributing as members of the pride. Between a year and a half to two years old, and if, they, if for some reason they were to be orphaned, they would be able to look after themselves at around about a year and a half. But a, an adult, I mean a lion on its own, a young lion on its own has a really tough time of things. They're so geared, they're so geared around being social creatures, social hunters. I haven't had a chance to properly look at the division that we have between males and females in this group of cubs. That's something we'll get to know in the future as we follow along with them over the coming weeks and months. <laughs> I'm sure that's the last thing Elias feels like. <laughs> She's not, not even a break in her stride. She's hungry. She drew the short straw and had to go and get this group of miscreants. And she's not really interested in their games for this evening. She's got a job to do, and she would very much like to get back to dinner. <laughs> Laurie, I have no idea. I mean, I jokingly said she drew the short straw. I have no idea how the lionesses decide which, which of them goes to fetch the cubs. Obviously, all three of them are mothers to different cubs in this group. One of them is the mother of the youngest three. I'm still not sure which one, obviously. So I would guess that this, this lioness who came to fetch this group of cubs is probably 
the mother of w several of them in this collection. I can't speak at one o'clock in the morning. There we go. I don't know how they decide. I like to think that they play their own game of Ching Chong Cha. Hard to imagine, though. I'm not sure how they'd manage the rock, paper, scissors motion. Maybe they take turns. Maybe one of them's just more responsible than the other. Maybe it's the one that isn't as hungry as the other lioness. There's always going to be a degree of discrepancy between how full the lionesses are. Oh, Kate. I would say no. Kate's question is whether or not all of these cubs share the same father. It's possible. They were fathered at the same time, which would have been probably by dominant male lions in this area. There's a coalition of four lions that are based around this area and that are the most likely candidates from what we understand. It's an unnamed coalition for now. However, there is a, especially here in the Mara, there is a good chance that cubs have been fathered by nomadic males. So there's such a high concentration of lions out here that even though the territorial males try to keep uh, sort of intruders out, they don't always succeed and it's very common for cubs to be fathered by a nomadic male that's just come in for a few days, obviously managed to find a lioness and estrus, mated with her and then slipped out again. And provided that that lioness has mated with the dominant males, whether or not, oh sorry Vim, whether or not he has fathered the cubs, he will still believe that he is the father. That's the, oh, hello. <laughs> oh, look at the excitement in that body language. You can see it so clearly. Yay, dinner. Happy, excited, playful. No worries about expending energy because there's going to be plenty of replenishment shortly. can hear the hyenas whooping. This is where she's got to be careful as she ducks down through the drainage and out the other side. The cub's going carefully as well. It's so important that she has her wits about her. So much responsibility goes into being a mother of cubs. Catching them dinner and after that long chase she must be exhausted yet at the same time she still has to make sure she is constantly alert. You can see how those cubs are ducking and diving into a hole there. That's the sort of thing that we've got to be careful of while we're driving off-road at night. We've got to make sure that we don't go tumbling down into a surprise drainage line. Okay, where did I put my torch? There. The cubs are moving into some very long grass. I want to make sure that they get plenty of space. Let's go back to Steph because it seems as though the scavengers are back. We absolutely do have some scavengers back. These lioness are up and looking at some ahina. There was about six ahina that floated past in the grass off in the darkness just there. And they are definitely looking like they haven't left these lioness alone. Hear them running around. Obviously those lions or the cubs have thought that it's safe enough to bring the cubs in this direction. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. So there's the lioness, one of them again, not scared of all these hyenas. Lock more this time, charging in. Tails up. Lots of noise. I see all three of them got up and chased these ahina. Ahina, not worry too much. They would have just got them excited. Listen to that. Listen to that. Lions roaring. Listen, look at that. Intimidation at its most intense. Roaring their challenge at those ahinas. Daring them to come in and steal the zebra. 
Hyena mm -hmm. not backing mm -hmm. down. You can see their tail up. Watch this lioness go in there now. She's not having any of that. Doesn't want this cheeky hyena to get anywhere close. There she goes with her head down. No noise. That is a dangerous lion charge. Very close to catching it. So as you saw there, that a lion charge with no noise, head held low, tail out stiff. That is a dangerous lion. She wasn't playing there. If she had caught that hyena, she would have tried to kill it. The bluff and the bravado that they showed initially, that was just intimidation. Coming back to the kill. Ears up. That jackal in the wrong place there, my friend. You need to get out of the way. <laughs> Black back jackal. Making their way out. Lions seem like they're coming out of the darkness again. Just to remind you, I cannot see the tips of my fingers over here. You're looking at this same as me on a screen. Here, lion is chasing again another hyena. I've got lions right next to me here in the grass. What's happening? What's happening? Got more hyena behind us. Oh, there's cubs. Here's all the lion cubs. They've come through that pack of hyena. That's incredible. That is amazing. Please just excuse that pole that you saw there. We have got a roof on the car. And unfortunately, we don't have magnetic roofs just yet that floats above us. Neither do we have. <laughs> Me trying to get out of the way. There's all those cubs. How awesome is that? And reunited at the car. Now, why are you so grumpy? Just look at that. Coming to share. I just got these heavy footfalls all over the place over here. Isn't that just fantastic? All of them back again on the kill. Mom has provided some food. And as we were mentioning a little bit earlier, just a much, much better way for these cubs to get nutrition is to eat the meat directly, not to have to wait for it to be made into milk by mom. Obviously, they still have milk. They will be... No, why are you so grumpy? You've got a full belly, your babies have had nothing. Hyenas seem to be, they seem to have been chased off. That lioness saw to it all. She was patrolling the perimeter, seeing those, those hyena off. You might find that that very aggressive response that we had from that lioness was because the cubs were coming. Now, Louise, you want to know if there's even any zebra left? That's a good question there, Louise. I think there's enough for the cubs. Don't forget that lion will be able to take nutrition from the skin, from the bones, from any of the soft tissue left. Uh, like the lioness would have been just interested in the most, uh, from, a, from a vitamins and minerals point of view, just the inside. So there'd be a f substantial amount of this carcass left, enough for young lion bellies at least anyway. You can see that they've all got their spot now. Now uh, harassing each other for uh, for space. Oh, they are in good condition. Cubs that are in bad condition, you can see their hip bones, their shoulder blades stick out, and quite often the tips of their ears become raggedy and dark as the hair falls out. You can see that these cubs are all in very good condition. That shows that mom has got enough spare energy to groom them. And it shows that between her milk and the meat that they are eating, that there's enough to put some, I wouldn't call it fat on their bones, but you can definitely see that they've got skin and muscle covering their skeletons there. Their hip bones are not sticking out, their shoulder blades are not sticking out. So these little babies are in very good condition, very, very good condition. You can see the lioness have now stopped eating for the most part. Kristen, you would like to know if the, if the cubs would ever be hurt by the adults in a feeding frenzy? Um, yes, although superficially, Kristen, uh, it's not in the lioness's best interests to, to damage or injure their own cubs. Neither is it in a male's lion, male lion's best interest to do that. 
you do find an odd scrape and a claw getting stuck and a squabble that might re result in a bad bite mark on the head or the face. But you can have a look at these lionesses' faces. That's a lifetime of squabbling over prey and you can have a look at they are relatively unscathed barring perhaps a few scratch marks on the nose from a carelessly thrown canine. Male lions on the other hand squabble with each other much more fiercely for kills. They're obviously bigger and need more food and uh, will fight that much harder for their, for their scrap. And their faces quite often are massively scarified and really just looking like they've stuck their faces into a meat grinder in some cases. So this that you're looking at now is, I would say, sibling rivalry and, and, and dinner, dinner table squabbling. You can see there's lots of teeth showing. Might even be a slap on the wrist, which is a, a soft bite. Probably enough to put me into a hospital if it had to bite me like that, but nothing serious here. You can see a lot of meat still there. Sorry, Jerry, you're just going to have to repeat Cat's uh, question there. Cat, you just asked if this question, and please excuse me for not hearing the whole one, um, was this an adult zebra? That is a good question, Cat. I'm not actually sure. Do you know that even up to this point, I still haven't seen this whole zebra? That's how thick the grass cover is here. I judge that it is an adult zebra, but a female zebra, not a, not a stallion, just based on the glimpse of the size of the hoof and of the back leg that I got a couple of minutes ago, and the vague outline of a shadow the very first time I saw this lioness on this zebra, about now it feels like an hour ago or so. But I still don't know, to be quite honest with you. I, I think it's an adult zebra, an adult female. It might be a slightly older foal. But definitely enough to feed a pride of line. And that's, that's good in anyone's book, I think. You can see her ears pricked up and facing backwards. Attack from the back while you've got your head in a carcass is what she's most scared of at the moment. So the ears back, A gets it out of the way so that they can feed without hooking their ear on a careless claw. But it is also there to hear what's coming behind them and quite often lions react very nervously to anything sneaking up behind them. Not so much from the front but definitely from the back. We have now some hyena calling behind us and that lioness has pricked her ears up and listen, listening for that. See that full belly. Easily one quarter of her body weight, and we're looking there at about 30 pounds of meat crammed into her belly. Lots of energy expended out here. What's happening here? Where are you going? Something else coming out of the darkness. She's calling. Where are you going? Difficult to see in the dark. There's something on the left hand side of that tree. I think with the cubs here, there's something in the distance. What is approaching? Is that a hyena? Is it another lion? No. It has that particular gait that an antelope has. I would say that that's probably some more zebra or topi or wildebeest. No, is it, could it be another lion? Let's see. I don't actually know what that is. Isn't that exciting? That's probably 200 yards away. There's a lioness at 30 yards away. You can see that binocular vision lets us see one eye on one, well, basically 
two hours on the front plane of the face, which gives them binocular vision, which allows them to judge distance, which allows them to catch food. <coughs> Zebra or a kudu, for instance, or a topi, giraffe, have eyes more on the side of their head, which gives them more, a wider peripheral vision, and of course allows them to see things like lions sneaking up on them, and enables them to run away quicker. Marisha, well, good evening to you from this side. Um, you've just asked me if uh, the lions eat faster here compared to the lions in Juma because of the higher hyena numbers. Um, that's a good question, Marisha. No. Um, my experience with lion is primarily in the Kruger National Park and at Juma. And I have witnessed this similar scenario on numerous occasions um, and it's where I'm drawing my my story for you tonight from is my experience in the Kruger I haven't had that much experience in this part of the world and the behavior is very similar and so that's where I'm drawing my rationale from and saying no that I don't think that the higher number of hyenas is changing the behavior of lions, making them eat faster. Um, what I will say that was unique about this particular uh, sighting for me was the fact that the lionesses went so quickly for the soft tissue without a hyena being here. And I think it's because they know that the hyenas in this area react so much faster and in much greater numbers. So. While the behavior itself is not unusual, I will say that it happened a lot quicker than what I'm used to, than what I've ever seen, in fact, I'll make that statement. So they went through the stages that I've seen in a, in a, in a, in a lion kill uh, much quicker here in this particular kill. This is the first kill that I've seen, uh, or hunt and kill that I've seen in, in East Africa. We're very, very privileged doing what we're doing, driving around here at night. It is an uncommon thing to do nighttime safaris in East Africa. Uh, my previous experience here has always meant back home at sunset. Now, I'm listening off to my left hand side. That lioness has reacted because we have lions roaring about four miles away. They're roaring to our east, which means that they are across the Mara River, that pride. So different pride. You can hear the ears pricked up. Now lioness will fight pride, prides, other prides, other lioness for territory. And yes, you heard me. Lionesses do have territories, not just home ranges, and they will fight. Male lions have territories as well, and they will fight amongst one another, and the two are not necessarily the same. The male lions and their territorial games are not necessarily the same as female lions and their territorial games. Candy, you just asked where the jackal went. I have no doubt, Candy, that that jackal skedaddled out of the way of the lion that was trying to chase the hyena away, which I think she was trying to do aggressively because the cubs were arriving from exactly the opposite direction. And I would imagine that that jackal is true to its nature, gotten a little bit out of the action, but is still on the periphery and will wait around over here until he can come in and inspect for some scraps, which is surely to get. But what we will do is scan around a little bit and let's see if we can... Uh... Okay, I'm listening now to an answering roar. One big male lion, much further away. Also east. So that, whereas the lions that we heard roaring now were about four miles away, the lion I just heard answering that roar was probably about six or eight miles away. It's lovely about this time of the morning, I don't even know what time it is, it's probably 
close to here, 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. No, it must be closer to 1 o'clock or half past 1 in the morning. Oh, excuse me, it's 10 to 2 in the morning. Gee whiz, time has flown in this sighting. So where, uh, where we're sitting right now in the Mara Triangle, just below the Angama Mara Plateau in southern Kenya, it is 10 to 2 in the morning and you are watching five lioness from what I can gather and a whole bunch of cubs. It looks like at least seven cubs devouring a zebra that they caught about an hour ago after having slept for an entire day. So for those of you just joining the action here, this is the Angama pride of lion. They live in the northern part of the Mara Triangle Game Reserve, just below Angama Mara Lodge and our camp. And uh, we joined them at sunset yesterday and have been with them pretty much ever since then. Living with the lions, so to say. And what a privilege it has been. What a privilege it continues to be. A pitch, pitch black night. There is no moon whatsoever. I have the Milky Way stretching out above me at the moment. Just a beautiful canopy of stars. I have Scorpio off to the front of the bonnet. <laughs> Janine, you, um, you've asked me a question that I'm going to ask directly to our Ascari here. Now, we are, as part of the privilege of driving around uh, in the Mara Triangle at night, we have a member of uh, the Mara Triangle Conservancy's uh, administration staff. It's called Nascari. It's an escort, basically, who is with us to make sure that we don't get lost, we don't break down, we stay safe. His job is to keep us and the animals safe. And we've just been asked if he's finding this whole infrared experience as exciting as everybody else. So I'm going to ask him directly. How have you enjoyed this infrared experience? He's nodding at me saying he cannot see a thing. So we look at lions <laughs> on a tiny little screen and uh, everyone else is looking at these lions in the blackness on this car, just listening to everything going around us. So I would say that um, Probably not as much as what, not as much fun as what we've been having. That's for sure. I'm privileged in that I have a little screen that I'm looking at next to my gear lever, which allows me to see what you're seeing. Other than that, I cannot even see the wing mirror on the opposite end of my car. That is how pitch it, pitch black it is. Stretch your hand out and wiggle your fingers. I cannot see myself doing that at the moment. That's how dark this is. These lions lying about five feet away from the side of my vehicle at the moment. Louise, you're echoing my thoughts there. I have to say on uh, I have to say thank you. Who um, and Louise, you've just said thank you very much to Wild Earth who have brought you uh, this wonderful kill at this time of the day using all this wonderful technology and. Thank you for watching, Louise. Without all of you out there, this wouldn't be possible. So I'm going to say thank you on that note. It is also a good time for us to say goodbye from this particular kill and this Facebook Live right now. If anything else happens, we will let you know, of course, all the action and none of the waiting, as it said. All right. I'm going to say goodnight for now. We, if anything else happens, we're going to let you know. Have a good evening. See you later.